Hello, I'm Jeremy Faust, Editor-in-Chief of MedPage Today. Thank you for joining us. Today, I would like to talk about an article I wrote in my newsletter over on Inside Medicine about the pediatric vaccinations just voted up, yes, by the FDA for children six months and up. Both Pfizer and Moderna getting the go-ahead to move on to the CDC for final approval. This means that really by the end of the month of June 2022, we will finally have vaccines for all ages across the spectrum, except for zero to six months. So number one, Pfizer and Moderna, they both are effective in uh, preventing COVID-19. We see that symptomatic disease is prevented by both of them. The antibody levels met their pre-specified goals, which implies very strong protection against severe disease. This is the immune bridging strategy that's been talked so much about. That strategy using antibody levels to correlate to levels of protection against severe disease, that has worked in older kids and teenagers. So we know that, that that played out well. So we are feeling confident that the antibody levels get us where we need to go. The second question that people always ask, is it safe? The answer is it looks very safe. The, the levels of side effects were similar to the other age groups. We do not have a big enough trial to detect any cases of myocarditis, which has been detected primarily in teen and young adult males. That's good news. The trial was big enough that if the rates were extremely high, we would see that. And we're reassured by the lower dose. We, we think that the lower dose for the, the toddlers and the quite frankly, the lower dose for the kids ages five to 11 has meant that the myocarditis rates have been lower in the five to 11, where we already have a rollout. And we think that'll be the same for six months up to five years, or in the case of Moderna, up to six years. The next question that I'm getting a lot, especially as a parent, is between Pfizer's three-dose series and Moderna's two-dose series, which is better for under five years old, for the littlest kids, the ones we're talking about. And there's been this headline that's been around that, that would seem to suggest that Pfizer is better. And that's because Pfizer found in their interim analysis an 80% efficacy against symptomatic COVID in the zero to five-year-olds after the third dose. Now, Moderna, for their part, they only have on average in the mid 40% efficacy range for the same question. So that would seem to suggest that Pfizer has this big edge over Moderna. But there are, are two reasons why I think they're probably quite similar. The first is that Pfizer's 80% number wasn't really a pre-specified interim analysis. They said we would do that analysis looking at the efficacy on symptomatic disease after a certain number of cases. And they actually did this before that, just because they wanted to get the FDA to look at the emergency use authorization, and they'd met their endpoint goals on the antibodies. So this 80% number is kind of a little early, the confidence intervals are extremely wide, so much so as to make it almost unreliable. And in addition, there is this thing that a lot of us call a halo effect or a honeymoon period, which is that after the vaccine, there's this period where it's almost as if the recipient has what's called sterilizing immunity. That is, it's really hard to get infected with COVID in the first five, six, seven, eight weeks after that vaccine because of just the circulating antibodies. Now that fades and what's left over is a longer term protection against severe disease, which is very important. But Pfizer looks like they did their little interim check right at the period, right at that point where the halo honeymoon period was ending and some, some infections in the intervention arm, in the vaccine arm, were starting to occur. So I suspect that if we had a couple more weeks or a couple more months of data, that that 80% efficacy would drop closer to Moderna's and that they'd probably be considered similar. On the other hand, Moderna has an advantage. And that's another reason why I think that these are kind of closer than people might realize, and maybe even Moderna is better. And that is that Moderna is only a two-dose series, given 28 days apart. So if you enrolled your kid to get Pfizer, they'd get a first dose, and they'd get a second dose 21 days later, but they wouldn't be protected. And then 60 days after that, they'd get the third dose. And then another week after that is where the study data starts to be relevant. So really, it takes up to 80, 90 days for a child to have protection from Pfizer. Whereas with Moderna, it's the doses on the first day at the 28th day, and then two weeks later, 14 days later is when their data set starts to take off. And so therefore you could assume that 42 days after getting Moderna, the kid is protected. Well, if you're a parent and you want your kid to be protected against SARS-CoV-2 by the first day of school this fall, 
Moderna is going to get you there, but Pfizer will not because for, for 40 some odd days, the ones who got Pfizer don't have protection until that third dose. Whereas Moderna, those kids got it pretty much right after that second dose. I might choose, and I probably really will choose Moderna for my four-year-old because I just want her protected as soon as possible. But someone might say, you know what? I think that in December or so, there's going to be another terrible, terrible surge at like Omicron, and we'll have a hundred times more cases than ever. I'd like my kid to have the maximum protection possible. So for that reason, Pfizer is better because actually they it goes it starts working later just in time for that surge. It's a little bit of gaming going on there, right? And we don't know what the future holds. So the bottom line is, I think that there are good reasons to give either one of them. And what's nice is we finally have options, whereas before we didn't. So that's the next move is not, uh, for me, the, the, the real frontier is not convincing someone Pfizer or Moderna, Moderna or Pfizer. The real challenge for all of us is to get parents to make that choice, to actually choose one of them, to choose vaccination. And we know in five to 11 year olds that vaccine rates are just way low. They're still in the 30% range. And that's just very, very bad. That's because people don't understand um, that on the population level, COVID is causing a problem for kids. And so what I think we, do, we need to do to move forward is to say, is to just speak the truth. Look, we, look, this isn't the same for a kid as it is for a, an advanced uh, senior citizen. Yes, that's true. And yet it's so common a disease that we need to prevent it from happening as much as we can and prevent bad outcomes, that's where the vaccine comes in. So we need to convince parents that it's necessary. We certainly need to talk about the safety profiles and we'll continue to monitor that. The last thing I'll say is that I think the way to, the way to get out of this period where we are so afraid of this virus is to maximize vaccination. Over time, we will see with better vaccinations, with better therapeutics, that COVID-19 won't be as fearful a disease to get as it was a year ago, let alone now. And so I think that using these tools in our kit will actually do the thing that a lot of people want to do, which is to help us move on. We do that by making COVID into a shrug off event, no big deal. And I think that we are closer to that than ever, but without vaccinating everybody, we will not reach that point.